So this is for Cinesemiotics. <clears throat> this is a literary history of fake texts in Apple's marketing materials. If we can zoom this a bit. Yeah, never bring a knife to a door fight. Exactly. Nobody wins in a knife fight? Well, yes, but Tinderos does win in a door fight, so that's the difference. Okay, like a lot of troubled young men, I used to pay close attention to Apple's developer conferences and special announcements, eagerly anticipating each new generation of iPhone and operating system. This is weird. Like, do troubled people actually focus on Apple? Like, is that really what happens? Like, it's a tech company. And you, why would a troubled men just focus on? Usually you're tech bros, but does that make you troubled? I don't know about that. In the 2000s and 2010s, these regular public demonstrations were filled with suspense and anticipation. See, that's the thing. Like, they were kind of fun. Like, this was like, you know, this was the heyday of like a new tech phenomenon. We didn't have these cool phones back in the day. And then we had these cool phones and like it was a lot of fun, you know? What would the phones look like this year? Which executives would Steve Jobs personally execute in a windowless room immediately following the presentation? Would the new iPhone finally solve my problems and make me happy? Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for tech to make you happy, then you've got other problems, but still. Here in 2023, the air, that air of mystery and expectation is gone. Every phone looks, looks the same, every announcement has been widely leaked, but there's still a good reason to attend Apple's marketing extravaganzas, the fake texts. Okay, so uh, Tinderis has got recounting a little history. Feel free to read. I've heard this. I'm talking about the mocked up texts and emails Apple puts together to demonstrate new messaging features in its operating system updates, presumably written by some well-paid professionals in Apple's marketing department. These eerily cheery, aggressively punctuated messages suggest an alternate dimension in which polite, good natures good-natured, rigorously diverse groups of friends and coworkers use Apple products exactly how they are designed to be used without complaint or error. Here are some of the more recent examples of what I am talking about used to tout this year's updates, iOS 17 and Mac OS Sonoma. So yeah, you can see here, we've got like a really, really well-taken photograph and like they went to a secret beach. I'd love to, a friend told you about, I'd love to see where you went. And so this person has been on uh, like, you know, cool, like, um, you know, uh, Oceanside views. And then there's, are you getting breakfast suit? I was just about to running late to the office. Can you get me something? Of course. How about a bagel? Yes, please. Got you covered. You can chillax. It went from chillax to chill. Uh, all it takes to stop a bad guy with the knife is a good guy with the door. Well, I mean, if their name is Tendarios, I don't know if everyone is up to the, uh, knifey dory fights. You were high. You was you were, you were high on. Well, I was on a high mountain. I read that you were high on a mountain. I was like, okay, excuse me. And you went the wrong way down. Had to go back the same way later on. Yeah, that's the sort of thing. It's like, I went the wrong direction. I have to turn around now and hope no one noticed. Yeah, I'm sure most people have done that at one point in their life or another. It's like, I have gone into the wrong neighborhood. I need to get out quickly. Festival weekend is here. Yes, everyone's in a gorgeous part of the world. Everyone in Apple world is always so cheery. Yeah, this is a little weird. And they're doing fun, interesting things. Festival weekend is here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Do we have everything we need? You're worried of rain, blah, 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 gear. Okay. You've got cute little icons and everyone's like, everyone, everything is going to be just great with your Apple product. Yeah, don't do that. Every new update to Apple software brings along with it marketing materials populated by new cast of characters engaged in a new set of projects, but, but storylines are never elaborated, elaborated, let alone resolved, and campaigns pass without any questions being answered. Oh, Cinesemiotics, thank you, and why the fuck am I not getting my alerts? Thank you for uh, gifting Infernal, appreciate it. We need the Burning Man gone, ro gone Wrong narrative. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh my god, we're drowning, I lost my dog. <laughs> it's like a... Sorry about anyone who's lost their dog. Um, yeah. Okay, this year we have text between oddly formal soapbox derby team and what seems to be a kind of stuffed pasta club that is by all evidence annoyingly dominated by a man named Rich Din taking suspiciously professional photographs of his own food. Yeah. I mean, this is the sort of thing. Lumpy says, I want one of these sexy reads. Mom, I have blood on my stool. Relax, eight. That's normal when you eat your aunt's enchiladas. Yeah, oh, God. Um, What's it called? If anyone doesn't know, uh, Hirsch, Hirschfeld's Rejected. Yeah, 
you have to go watch this. Maybe not this minute. Um, yeah, so this is just a classic of uh, internet lore. If anyone does not know it, um, you should go check this out. It's on YouTube. But, like, it's great. And so, at one point, someone is, uh, you know, shitting blood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know it was a joke, but here we go. Man dies after running into fire ceremony in Burning Man. He made more. Oh, that's great. I didn't know if he made more. So, yeah. So, like, you know, I, well, that's the problem. People are on drugs at Burning Man. Why does it work this time? Who knows? And this is going to actually mute my video. Because this gets copyrighted. Nice. Thank you for gifting uh, Adam Fighter a sub. Appreciate it. And that time you got the alert. So, yeah. Um... I like my uh, John Wick thing. It's fun. Get the little cheers. So yeah, so these people they take perfect photos and everyone's so happy and doing fun and interesting things with their Apple products. So, if there's still mystery in Apple events, it is located here in the uncanny fictional world suggested in these images. Who are these people and what is wrong with them that they text like this? That's true. You know, why do people talk this way? A history of fake Apple text, uh, 2011 to 2023. A proper literary study of fake Apple text has yet to be undertaken, but with the help of the Wayback Machine, we can sift through more than a decade's work, work of marketing materials to identify certain trends and themes. For the sake of precision, let's begin our survey in 2011 with the launch of iMessage and iOS 5. Here, so far as I can tell, is the first ever fake Apple iMessage conversation. Hello from the office. I'm off grid, sorry. I'd say photo, please. Took this today, and so then they have themselves in um, an obviously non-Western-looking vehicle, like Western thing. Looks fun. Wish I was there. Lots of food and sun. Almost nap time. Very cute. Here we see both sides of the chat between Elisa Rossi and Greg Apodaca, in which Elisa sends Greg a photograph from her vacation. It is hard not to appreciate the rigid, rigidly ortho, orthographically correct banter between these co-workers, friends. The true nature of their relationship remains unclear. <laughs> Viper says, Mom, I ran into the fucking bonfire. Don't worry, honey, that's normal when you eat your aunt's enchiladas. Yeah, I mean... Sometimes it's less painful to uh, do something like that than, you know, poop out the enchiladas. My buddy, actually the one who was, I say I only trust half of what he was saying. I trust this story, though. He actually was in the hospital for something that had gone wrong with him. And uh, he was in such pain that he was actually injuring himself to get out of the pain that he was in. Like, he was injuring himself um, in order to, like, you know alleviate the other pain and he they he took so much sedative that and was still doing it that they had to call in the legal the the the, pre, the hospital president president and legal had to be there and say go ahead so that he didn't like severely damage himself and they because they had to go way over safety regulations to sedate him at that point so it's like yeah um, so shit like that does happen and I believe him and about that story is a sort of scared of that bug but like that's the sort of stuff like it does happen and like it's like it happened to him but like yeah <clears throat> okay uh yeah Adam Finder I think that's exactly it they're trying not to reverse engineer it but kind of like analyze what's going on what is Apple's vision of the person who uses Apple products and like what is the vision they're trying to sell the public on the type of life that you will have once you have the Apple product and so that's the question what are they using remember cinesemiotics what are the symbols and uh, signs that they are using to get an impression across to the viewer um, like this is the sort of thing we're doing so we're doing sort of literary analysis and trying to understand the symbolism and the structure of what is going on in these texts. So it's hermeneutics too, and if you're using the philosophy term. So we're doing a little hermeneutical analysis. We're analyzing the text in the way the text is supposed to be uh, analyzed. Uh, Viper says there's a stinging bush called the Gimpy Gimpy in Australia where else, and the sting is so painful that people often commit suicide rather than deal with the extreme pain. Yeah. 
Um, apparently there is a jellyfish that stings you that gives you impending sense of doom. So you just like, you want to die at that point. Like, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. So it's like, there's a few things like it, they fuck with your head. Um, there also was just a report of a, the first fungal infection of the brain or something like a, a plant fungus affected us. So, um, the last of us is coming and, uh, they also found a, ringworm of some sort that jumped from a python that got into the brain uh recently too um yeah <laughs> system says we, but we are also reviewing this author's work itself yes that's also what we are also doing so we are talking about how this person is talking about uh apple talking about the type of people that use their products um once touched caterpillar and spikes were terrible. I had to use duct tape to remove it from skin. Yeah, exactly. Florida has brain eating amoeba. Yes. So like things, um, people like the whole climate change things, people like laughed about it in the past, but they didn't realize the sort of things. Once the climate gets a little bit out of whack, then a lot of things start to break. And this is the beginning of a lot of things starting to break. Like the weather is getting way heavier than we expected. Uh, animals that were not affecting us all of a sudden are affecting us. It's like things that like were, you know, kept down and weren't so bad in the past are now starting to shake up a little bit. And uh, yeah, so I think that was with the Florida brain eating amoeba. It's like we had too many of like the bacteria in a certain area causing other things to grow. And then all of a sudden now we have brain eating amoebas in Florida. It's like don't go swimming in certain areas because it will kill you. Okay. Sharing photographs as dimension apple cultural practice. So yeah, so again, they're trying to actually build in picture sharing as part of like who you are. The main thing to note here is the photograph. There is nothing, nothing that denizens of the Dimension Apple love more than sharing photographs with each other. One of the very few desires that people in these texts ever express is for their friends to share photos. Send photos is the come to Brazil or show feet of the Dimension Apple. In the, month, in the meantime, I'd love to see the photos you took today. Send photos. Oh, yeah. See, did you get any good sunset photos? So this is interesting. They're trying to instantiate sort of a cultural thing where people share more photos. I wonder if they get more money when people share photos. Photographs of what you ask. In Dimension Apple, everyone is always spending the weekend together having fun like Ken, Angela, and Fritz in iOS 7. So yeah, so this is them taking selfies together. Yeah, very cute. So yeah, look at that cute picture they took together. Did you get any sunset photos? Yeah, well, I mean, good ones. I don't know. Or Alish and Eden in iOS 8. See, also, see, that's the 9.27 a.m. See also the note at 8.17. So yeah, we've got this. Oh, look how they're out in the nice, uh, you know, mountainous area. Here's a great... So again, the uh, author is pointing out, like, I don't know if you can see, but like right over here, they're saying, here is like uh, another uh, re a reference to a photo that they were talking about. So like, they're referencing photos also. Um... And says, why Apple people in the U.S. obsess about FaceTime? What does it do that goes over and above apps that offer video calls? Like in Latin America, WhatsApp is king. Um, FaceTime did it well first, I think. And it made it um, streamlined. So it was a little bit easier for like, you know, you and your parents to do it. Like if they're not such tech people. So it kind of got everyone into doing it. And so I think it was just a... Uh, you know, there was a little bit of a, they were first to market with a good video conferencing app. And I think that's all it ever really was. But that's a good question. And WhatsApp is a, uh, I think, superior product at this point. But still, people with iOS, why would they get off what has been working? Yeah, and what Vipers says, it's not likely they do. Um, and they also have many rules. You'll see that there's comments like villains cannot use iOS devices. They can only use, um, you know, Android phones because Apple will not allow a villain to have a uh, Apple phone. Um, so that's the sort of thing. Since it makes this sunset is a term software companies use to reference products that will no longer be supported as of X date. I am assuming that's a coincidence, but sounds rather sinister in that. Yes, that's interesting. Like that might be... Um, them trying to you know deflect a little bit by making sunset sound good even though when whenever else uh, apple has heard about it like used in also with sunset uh like tech companies in general it's generally bad things so that's an interesting sort of uh maybe they're trying to 
make it sound less bad. Um, yeah, so exactly unreal. FaceTime is good for the call your gra to call your grandma at the market. So like, that's the thing. They sort of made it so very easy to use before other companies figured out how to do it. And I think that was kind of the thing. Yeah. Wouldn't be a conspiracy, but more of a joke. Now, I don't think they're doing anything here as a joke. I think they're doing it maybe like if if it was done intentionally like this, they're, they're trying to make Sunset sound good when associated with Apple as opposed to Sunset when it's like Google is starting to get famous for, you know, closing down services of theirs. And so like they're sunsetting the service sounds bad when you talk about Google sunsetting services. When you talk about sunsets with Apple, you're talking about photos. And so even when Apple shuts something down, you don't get the same, uh, you know, bad uh feeling yeah yeah well i agree it's not getting overlooked completely it's just what was the intention though yeah no no, no. i 100 in semiox is just what was the intention joke or um like intentional like to try to get the good vibes as opposed to the bad bad vibes um i haven't started using any new google things since they killed reader like seriously unreal like me too like that may have been the last new Google service. Um, and I use uh, Feedly now and uh, I may get off that, but I really haven't touched Google stuff. And you know what? I'm not using any fucking more. I'm not using Amazon for anything. If I don't have to, I'm already on Twitch. You're already getting my money. I'm ordering directly from China from now on. Cause basically everything I was buying on Amazon, if I could help it was like, what? Like everything I can buy, I'm buying direct from China. I'm not going through Amazon middlemen. And if I'm buying something from a store, I'll go to the fucking store website and buy it directly from them. Because fuck Amazon. Uh, for like, just like shopping nowadays. But most of the audience doesn't get it right. Probably not. I mean, it'd be like kind of a subliminal messaging sort of thing. Since I'm ex. Yeah. Yeah, Feedly. It's not that bad. Um, you know, I have a few beefs with them, but like they've been pretty good to me. Lumpy says, also, sunsets are not controversial until a tearful person cries, a sunset defiled my granny. <laughs> God damn it, Lumpy, why? Um, the, term sun the term sunset, Adam says, makes it sound like a positive, like, friendly fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alibaba for the win. Yeah, I usually am doing AliExpress, and I recently started ordering off Temu. Temu just seems like AliExpress, but like overstock stuff that people are trying to get rid of, so you get like a little bit of a break, but their selection isn't as good as the Ali uh, sort of empire. So Temu uh, has been really good for a few things uh, lately, and you know, you're getting a few, even a few bucks off. I feel like it's overstocked uh, AliExpress items. So it's... um been pretty happy with them and you can see it's the exact same damn products so <coughs> or paul natalia stefan and the kids in ios 9 so paul and i can't believe how quickly the week went by come visit visit us again soon here's a great photo of the kids enjoying their popsicles on the deck yes kids with ha with ice cream are happy so it's like yeah Oh, let's see what anything like sneaky in the text because that was sneaky stuff before I don't see anything too sneaky I came up with a list of possible sick day excuses as usual you did not get this <laughs> yeah see that's this is very cutesy like this is the joke uh since I don't know if you can see that well you you had the link so it's like the sick day excuses and you didn't get this from me okay and so here was how was the road trip yeah people doing fun stuff in fun places Look at how sharp the corners are in the green ice cream. Yeah, well, I mean, this is a professional photo. This is probably foam. Like, she ain't actually eating this ice cream. This is not, like, real ice cream. This is like a, you know, know what this is? That's a, uh, that's a block of soap. That's a soap block is what that is. Yeah, I installed all three cameras last night. Sounds sus. Oh, yeah, was that one? Oh, yeah, look at this. Yeah, see, again, with their photos everywhere. Because you know what they're probably doing? They're probably mining photos for, you know, AI and stuff. That's what they're doing. I brick, exactly. Uh, people are always taking trips in Dimension Apple, seemingly for the sole purpose of creating photographs to share via Apple software. They love to plan canoe trips and summer getaways and casual weekends in Santa Cruz. They form group chats centered around trips that only one participant was on. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. It's like, people who can take trips have money. Viper says Apple is a fashion company, not a technology company. Yeah, it's a lifestyle company. That's what this article is actually getting more into is like, what is the lifestyle they're sell selling you? It's not just fashion, it's a lifestyle. 
Cinema Mix says, I wonder if it's reference to the older version of iPhone being clunky. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So, hey, I'm home. How That's great. How was the road trips and photos? So you got a gorgeous uh, photo here. Um, yeah. The mention Apple trip destinations have become increasingly vague as the road trip group chat suggests part of an overall and troubling vaguening of the dimension Apple. Are specific places disappearing in dimension Apple? Are the edges of the map softening? How far can you drive and where do you end up? Where did Nandita and her friend go on their many fun trips? We may never know. Mind sharing some of the ones you took? Of course, let me pick a, a few of the favorites. Oh, thank you so much. So yeah, so you can see some like I don't, you probably can't see. So this is clearly is just a headshot. You can't see she's inside something. And then like you can see just like what looks like a vaguely minaret looking top of a building here. But you can't see. It could be anything. It's just a dome. Can't wait. Such fun trips. Can't wait for more. Me to miss you. Yeah. So they're doing all this fun stuff, but it's often some vague who knows where. Uh, Frank says they need to mine the photos to know how to keep marketing their next products. Yeah. Um, well, I can try. Uh, did I just screw this up? Yeah, I... Oh, dear. I can't... I don't know where I am anymore. I may have lost it. There we go. Yeah, so, like, again... This is a uh, vaguely Middle Eastern looking thing because of the color of the brick and like the dome top. But of course, it could be anywhere in Europe, too, for that matter. Sort of like a uh, like a stone dome sort of thing. But like it's really very small and uh, I can't tell. There's nothing to see. Like this is you're not going to get any better. You're losing resolution at this point. It's really a very small. Um, like this is like 200 uh, zoom in. Or whatever. Like, you can see how giant the subscribe button is at top. Yeah, so this is the click to zoom in. <laughs> nope. Okay. The vagueness was not always the case in the early years. Dimension Appleites love to take advantage of iMessage's free international messaging by, for example, chatting with their parents while studying abroad. So... Spain. So this one says Spain, but you can see this is an old one because it's pixelated so the, it's got it's already jpegged you might wonder why this dimension apple daughter is sending her mother such a professional and stage look photo photograph but the other thing to understand about the people who live in dimension apple is that they are serious photography hobbyists and make frequent use of apple software to edit their photos before sharing them no wonder rich din's ravioli photo looks so good yeah i mean that was the one above um but yeah, so this is the thing. They want to make their photos look great because, you know, they're glamorous, impressive tech people. So yeah, this is uh, showing the editing them right now. There's this great one of you. And so this is like, you know, professionally done photo editing stuffs. Note, note the use of emoji to indicate that the recipient knows what camping is. Ah, uh, yes, because playing next camping trip next month. And so this is, again, getting into the image sharing thing. Um... Cameras on iPhones and iPads were trashed at first, and says, I had an iPad 2 and it was disappointing how bad the quality was. Yeah, but I mean, nowadays, they're really good. They really up that. Um, so this is the more recent thing, um, the more recent ones. I mean, they want to sell Photoshop and the software. Like, so basically, this is one of Apple's big businesses that people like um, fan, like boy and girl fan they over some of the uh, graphics editing programs. And I think Apple makes a lot of money off that stuff. So I'm sure they, they like pushing this. Um, what's the, the thing they do? The create, uh, was it create or whatever that thing is. Lumpy says one more photo sharing should be summarized. Take a look. Should I go to the emergency? Yeah. Frank says, nah, the rash will go away in a couple of days. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got professional-looking stuff. All Hey, take a look at these, my list. I think I'm getting a feel for taking cool-looking shots. Last one's my sister. I just did the exposure and really like how it turned out. Yeah, so, again, very fancy photo thingies. Surprise! The only thing that approaches sharing photographs as key cultural practices in Dimension Apple is 
to mention Apple is planning parties. When they are not emailing or texting to plan trips or share photographs, they're planning parties with one another. I just remembered we have to figure out where to put the dessert par the the dessert bar for the party. Yeah, I mean this is the old uh, if you guys remember Friends from the '90s, those people never seem to have to work. They just like hung out at the coffee shop, and they like somehow had these huge New York City apartments that would be million dollar apartments, and they just you know could afford them on their shitty fucking jobs. And says their editing programs are amazing. Amazing Final Cut Pro was pretty awesome. I learned editing in one. It was such a pleasure. See, that's where I think they're making a lot of money off that software. So I think that's part of this, that they want people to be able, that they want people to think, oh, you can do this on Apple software. You just need a few more programs. And like, of course you can do it. So yeah, I think that's part of the uh, marketing strategy here. And so like, they're just always pushing photos and parties. (laughs) Because you want to be glamorous, have friends, and then you want to take pictures of it to show how glamorous and stuff you are, um, glamorous and fun you are, and then you, you know, always using Apple software and hardware to do it. Unreal says one of the frustrating things that Apple hasn't gone past uh, the Johnny Ive era fetish for thin as possible. The camera sh- would sh- uh, could be so much better with a little bit more physical size. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. When you put the design people in charge, or, like, and none of this, what we're talking about, is the physical design. This is the um, lifestyle sales. If you once you put the designers over the engineers, that's what happens. You sacrifice looks for functionality. I mean, good, bad, I don't know. Um, Unreal says I got sucked into the Apple world at a time when their displays were good for my impaired vision. At a time with PC and Android stuff was trash. See, this is what happens. Sometimes the hardware is what you need. That's like. Not like, of course, that's good. But then you get locked into their system and, you know, it becomes a lifestyle choice. Like my cousin, he was always an Apple fanboy for many years. And now he's realized they're making a lot of decisions that actually aren't consumer friendly. And he's not as like, you know, Apple fanboyish. But he was always showing me this stuff. I was like, yeah, but I don't take any photographs. So I don't care. I don't take like my cousin's an actor. Like I don't take uh, videos of things. I don't like make movies i don't care about like photo uh video editing like that doesn't matter to me like i the video editing i use is the one that's built into the twitch website here and that's how i publish my stuff i don't do any touch-ups like it's not a big deal to me but like that's the thing if you are an actor and you take lots of pictures of yourself because that's what actors do it's like yeah um dci says it's engineer's job to build to specification you don't want to leave an engineer to run away with the design well of course you want but you want both but if engineers have a bit more power then they'll be like look design people we need those two more millimeters it makes a difference so like yeah and says Macs are hardcore stuff if you're into any type of media production owning a mac for it makes you a pro it's pretty impressive but an iphone meh yes but like i think that's they're trying to get you into the exact well yes They're just trying to get you into the ecosystem. They want you to, you know, get into the photo editing idea. So then you'd be like, oh, I need to bust out my Mac and spend $3,000 on my Mac so I can, you know, do the photo editing. Okay. Surprise parties in particular have huge importance to Dimension Apple characters. And the surprise party as a motif frequently occurs across iOS versions. So yeah, surprise birthday party for Kirk here. Um, Best birthday ever here. Um, I'm pretty sure she thinks everyone forgot. This is going to be so good. Oh my God. Yeah. Have a good night, Lumpy. Uh, give Lumpy a shout out. Oh, Lumpy. Anyone who does not know Lumpy should go follow Lumpy and go hang out in his streams. Uh, Lumpy is a chemist. And he was talking about chemistry when I was in the stream. It was actually sort of fascinating stuff how he is like, you know, helping to design better processes for chemicals and, you know, figure out different ways of making stuff so that like, you know, maybe it's not so hard to make a little bit of a chemical, but say you want a lot of a chemical, all of a sudden you can't do that. And Lumpy has to help you out. So it's like, that's where Lumpy's Lumpy and Lumpy's team gets called in to like, you know, solve other people's problems that are too hard for them or whatever for them to solve. But then he's also a Minecraft streamer. He's making fantasy worlds and it's cool, like really fascinating architecture and like design choices. So it's a fun stream. Yesterday's stream was pretty intense. It was fun. I left yesterday's stream like after the, just like we're talking about chemistry stuff. So. I heard someone else say that it was intense too. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Shane was saying that he, uh, was like, I'm not going to touch that stream. (laughs) 
Oh, what do we got? Some fan art. Oh, I love fan art. We will look at that in a second. Thank you, Cinesemiotics. Okay. Well, let's see. How much more of this do we have? We got a bunch of this, but just it it just then goes down to a a bunch of images after a while. Okay, so we're talking about sur- surprise parties. While birthdays and road trips are still a cornerstone of the sociocultural world of Dimension Apple, we increasingly get glimpses of their life outside the constant circle of parties and weekend getaways. Recent seasons prominently feature examples of intensely friendly collaboration on vague projects and presentations, all of which seem to exist in some nebulous zone between work and volunteering like pantry co-op planned by a group chat mysteriously called Foodies. Yeah, so again, this is... You got to think, who are the sort of people that like these do-gooders who are planning parties and like vaguely working and stuff? This is just like sort of the moneyed, lazy, not, I don't know about lazy, the money just, I, uh, I what's the word, idol, uh, idol, the, like the moneyed idol who have nothing better to do than just, you know, throw parties and try to be good people sometimes. And after spending five minutes making it, I'm ignored for fuck's sake. Oh, that's you? No, no, I didn't Max. Oh, did I miss one? I went quiet because I was making something. So fucking lifestyle. Uh, I didn't even see it. Let's go look at what Vipers has and go see how. <laughs> Send nudes. Oh my God, I can't believe you did. Oh, Vipers. That's wonderful. <laughs> <sighs> wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, so this is what you really should be using your iPhone for. Someone, uh, what's it called? Caught, uh, fi- no, the U.S. government was showing fake messages at, like, the impeachment hearing. Fake, like, iPhone messages. So it was, like, literally this stuff. You can't say, like, no, I put a five-minute timer on that. That five minutes was up, like, an hour ago. <laughs> um, I put it, like, I, my banner word, I didn't say the word like for five whole minutes. I'm not doing it for, yeah, I put a five minute, uh, like redemption. I think I changed it. That's a good question. Did I, uh, manage requests. I want to see what it says. I will refund your money. If you did not cancel word this minute, like, uh, that I'm going to mark as complete. That was 57 minutes ago. Marked as complete. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not doing it forever. Oh, okay. I will attempt not to say it. If it is part of the article, then I have to say it because I'm not breaking their, uh, if it breaks their, um, the meaning, I have to do it. <coughs> you did it again. Though. Well, if it didn't pop up in my chat, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, foodies. So everyone here is, you know, doing this sort of good goody two shoes because they have nothing better to do with their time who knows what this presentation is about or why everyone is so enthusiastic about candace can you lead the presentation can't wait to show our work dave i can yeah of course so yeah again people are just trying to do like vaguely good things because they have time and effort and don't know what else to do with themselves the mystery of john bishop one rule of Dimension Apple is that there is no crossover. The people who populate any given update are all new to that update and never appear again in future marketing materials. Richard Din and Trev Smith are unique to iOS 17, Sarah Cost- uh, Costal Blanco and Eden Sears to iOS 8, etc. With one exception, John Bishop. Everyone at Apple is on Molly. Again, this is the moneyed idol folks. They're just taking recreational drugs because they have nothing better to do with themselves. And so... You know, there was a thing a few years ago where they, it was a uh, rich person activity to go get ecstasy and take it with your friends. And it was sort of, they were trying to, you know, whoever was pushing the ecstasy on people was trying to make it sound more, you know, upper class for whatever. JB implies espionage. Remember, oh, interesting. Like from James Bond, do you, do you mean? Yeah, James Bond is primary. Interesting. So John Bishop might be mysterious and exciting. Interesting. Okay. Bishop, whose name seems to be borrowed from an Apple designer, first appears in iOS 10 as a contact, auto-populated 
uh, by Apple Mail. He is possibly a Cupertino-based contractor being recommended to a person named Eric Townley. So we've got John's number here. John Bishop Home, John Bishop Work. So this is our mysterious John Bishop. Unreal Brian says, no text from the planning for the high-end spell swapping parties, though. Yeah, I mean, this is the idle people. You don't, like, you're not doing anything uh, actually interesting like that. Call it, yeah. Since it makes says, lots of such characters appear as that when you look at those initials in literature after Bond. Interesting. See, that's interesting. I didn't know that. In most cases, this would be the latest, last time we would ever see John Bishop's name. But a year later, amidst the marketing materials for iOS 11, who should appear again but John himself? John Bishop saved your seats next to Andrew, but you should still come. Ooh, so like you don't like Andrew, but John says you, you'd still like it. Okay. Like Jesus Christ. Exactly. Who is John Bishop, the Plains Walker who travels so casually from one iOS to the next? What other powers does he possess? And why does he hate Andrew so much? Yeah. So, yeah. So, this is the mystery. You might not like some of the people, but John says it's okay. Things to, that do not exist in Dimension Apple. Anne says being social is way more important than having boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> Valpo says, isn't Bishop the time-traveling X-Man? Oh, there's a backstory. Well, there we go. Who knew? So uh, Valpo might know this. John the Baptist, actually. I think Bond can have a reading as such, but that's for another day. Interesting. Okay. So now, yeah, there might be a story here. I mean, you got to think that whoever they're paying to do their marketing is going to be a very high-end person. Probably well read, probably knows a ton of like cultural influences. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, oh, wow. So, there's a whole Wikipedia article on the thing. Thank you, Vipers. We're even, we're doing an Apple fanfic now. Come on, Unreal Brian. Are we really above Apple fanfic? Have you read some of the philosophy that we've read on this uh, philosophy roulette? The people who are getting paid to do Apple marketing are probably higher quality than some of the authors we've read here. So, yes. Okay, things that do not exist in Dimension Apple. The denizens of Dimension Apple love the following things. Punctuation trips, sharing photographs, using emoji, taking photographs, surprise parties. You might be inclined to say that they hate roasts, bits, gossip, cynicism, text abbreviations like lol, and other standard features of texting in our dimension, but it is not at all clear to me that any of these things even exist in Dimension Apple to be hated. Like Android users, irony simply does not occur in Dimension Apple. Yeah, again, they're selling a lifestyle. The lifestyle is a happy one. You're not going to have cynicism there. But we are not above it exactly. What's up, Owen Humpter? How you doing? We are reading something. We're doing a little literary theory. We're talking about the literary history of fake text in Apple's marketing materials. Like they're uh, they're basically a lifestyle sales company at this point. And so what are they what kind of lifestyle are they um pushing? on you through their marketing materials over the course of the last like 10, 15 years of Apple, uh, you know, marketing things on their iPhone. So you ready to like the stream? You're also doing good. You, oh, I'm doing okay. Cool. Glad you're here. Don't forget the link. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. It's, uh, right here. We're going to do it like a, in a minute. I'm trying to get through, you know, just, uh, see right here is where they start. Just, this is the end. So. Yeah, this is the end. So we'll, we'll get to that right after this. For a long time, I've enjoyed the stilted, improbable cheeriness of fake Apple texts for their extreme distance from my own texting habits and experiences. As my friend Emma put it to our group chat, if any of you texted me like this, I would immediately call your significant others to make sure you hadn't been kidnapped. Yeah, it's again, it looks way too formulaic. But in the last year or so, I've realized that Dimension Apple does exist, or at least overlaps with our own, in one very specific place. The WhatsApp groups that the parents at my son's daycare school create to share information or set up play dates. In these groups, and only in these groups, do I encounter the same kind of earnest helpfulness and baffling ebullience that exists in the Dimension Apple. Naturally, I find them totally alienating. So this is interesting. When people are trying to raise their kids, they're trying to do things that are just like completely for their kids. I, my brother has a t uh, one and a half year old, so I get this. They're trying to do everything like for their kid. Everything has to be for their kid. Everything has to be great. Every they're trying to make everything fun for the kid because, you know, it kind of sucks to be a baby. And so it's like, this is the thing. You're being infantilized is what it is. The infantilization is um 
part of what's going on here. They're treating you like you, you're in a bubble, a walled garden, which Apple's famous for, to be like sort of uh, taken care of. And I am now out of the five minutes since semiotics. Yeah, don't be sorry. I didn't forget though. But yeah. A Al Gore is on Apple's board of directors. Sure. But I mean, board of directors at this point is basically trying to get favors pulled um, between different like trade organizations or governments. And so Al Gore knows a lot of people. And I mean, you know, Hillary Clinton's on a bunch of boards of directors. All these people are like, that's just, that's the business. Once you get into politics, once you leave politics, you're on boards of directors so that you can get certain favors in the government when, you know, think laws you need passed and whatnot. Viper says, speaking of life cells, have you ever wanted to take a break at work? Fakeupdate.net. What is this? Let's take a look real briefly. I mean, we're at the end of this paper. So, oh, fake Windows update screens. Cute. Oh, go so you can like, you know, be like, hey, Windows XP is updating. Cute. Where am I? There we are. Okay. The Red Max Library of Fake Apple Texts. To aid future study of the Dimension Apple, I'm publishing all the screenshots and images of fake Apple texts I was able to pull from the Wayback Machine below. Please share any theories, details, etc., uh, theses, etc. you developed from this corpus. Note that the Wayback Machine didn't scrape any images from iOS 13, so we're missing that update. Okay, and so there we go, and that's it. Abashed, the toddler stood and felt how awful Windows is. Uh, since MX says it's name dropping. Yeah. Okay. Unreal says, have you seen the books like quantum physics for babies? We need Linux for toddlers. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that existed. Actually, I'd be shocked if it didn't exist. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen some of those. I actually, there's a streamer I've watched for a long time. He's the one who actually got me onto Twitch. You may have like, if you've seen me around, you've seen this emote. This is Mr. Llama. He had a kid. And he was, he put up like a little throne page and he had a, you know, a thing, a wish list. So he had literally like Spanish for babies. And I bought him like Spanish for babies or something for his, uh, you know, congratulate him on his uh, pregnancy and his happy, uh, the, like the birth went well and everything. So like, yeah, there are, he was actually getting like Linux for babies or something that was on the list. I think I've seen that. Um, but yeah. Okay. So let's do a quick review. What do we think about this? We can, and we're talking about not just the content, but the presentation of this. Yes, this was a blog post, but um, yeah. So if we think this was fun, you give it a brain dance. If you think it made some big claims that didn't uh, match up, then yeah, like this thing article claimed that there is a dimension Apple. This is, they're selling a lifestyle or a world that doesn't exist. So like, did this actually bring the, the, uh, the, the evidence to show that if it didn't, then didn't, I mean, is this navel gazing only for academics? I mean, it's, it is only for really nerdy people who care about this shit, but maybe, maybe not. Or Robor's deep, ancient mysteries, big ideas. Not really. This is marketing, but like, not that marketing can't have deep, uh, ancient mysteries in it, but like this one is basically again, lifestyle sales. I don't think so. But if you think it does uh, give it a nog oro, the scream is it existential artistic drama? We're getting close to artistic drama here. Um, golden turd, all style, no substance, and knife did it slice and dice, just like Apple gave it the poop. Why did Brain Dance not go through? Oh, small B on. Uh, I can fix that for you, Anne, but small B on Brain Dance. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So this was fun. Let's give it a Brain Dance. I mean, it's a little bit of you know. I, I kind of feel the. Uh, vipers there um it was this is this is a little bit full of shit they had a lot of screenshots but like did they really actually make their argument i don't know um so unreal thank you for the vote i'm also gonna give it a uh turn it was a little bit weak on stuff they made some big claims and well they they made some very shiny claims they made it they showed a lot of screenshots did they actually have a lot of substance to it not really. Remember, you can also vote yay and vote nay. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. I can fix that later. It's uh, grapes, not grape B. So, yeah. I know some people are on um, cell phones and uh makes it harder. Is it very pop level but had interesting things? Yeah. So, Tindera said nay. I mean, I'm not going to give it any uh, yay or nay vote. It's just going to let go. There we go. Thank you, Cinesemiacs. Appreciate you fixing it because I don't have to do it later then. 
but like I can fix stuff. Yeah, so it was very pop level, but had an interesting idea. Yeah, I mean, but what was the idea in the end? The idea in the end was that there's a there's sell they're a lifestyle company selling you a certain vision of like giving uh throwing parties and going on trips and having fun with friends and taking photographs. These are marketing things. Ironic that the iPhone Fs this up. Yeah, but remember, this is the intersection of Amazon and uh, iPhone. So it's like you've got the two big tech giants battling it out here. Um, iPhone wants it to be easy, but Amazon wants to get paid. And so the fact that I'm using a third-party software to use, get emotes in, it's just, you know. But yeah, this is the thing. So in Cinecine Axia, as the grapes. But we had it's fun, but it really was a lot of fluff. And so thank you all for this and uh, appreciate it. If anyone else wants to get it in, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave the screen up for um next few seconds. And uh, I should get a, again, something I wanted to do, but I want to get a countdown on this, uh, fix up some other stuff, but you know. Yeah, and it, it was a fun blog post. It was. Cinecimix said it was a vote yay. See, even though it's crap, it's still fun. And they said yes. Unreal says, I say it's a little more. It's kind of drawing a picture of the pleasant fill to be found in Apple product demos. More could have been said about how that promotes a certain aspirational life in neoliberalism. Yeah, that's fair. But I mean, it is a little bit more, but like they didn't say that more. And so it's like they didn't take the, the author here did not take that. You're right. And you're right for on both things. It is a little bit more, but the author didn't say it like they could have gone into more the asp what more things in the aspirational life of an uh, the idealized Apple product user is going on. Yeah, and, they could, and also Cinecimax, how it reflects like neoliberalism in the markets that they're trying to present, which I assume this is um U.S. focus, because that's where all the uh, images were taken from. Yeah, the, as the audience or American customer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That would have been, if they had said a few comments on that, that would have been, you know, a little big brain for this article by taking the step back and looking at U.S. society. Yeah, you, no, you mean U.S. Yeah, 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 yeah. And U.S. to us and the U.S.A. Okay, but that's it. I guess everyone got what they want to say in. Thank you, Frank, for 